Hi, Madeline here from Sonic Bloom with a new episode of the Airborne Life Insider Tips. And this time I want to talk about advanced key mapping. And what I mean by that is, first of all, I've got a tip for you, how you can use this well. Secondly, I want to show you some tricks of how you can actually make this most useful. And so key mapping is something that basically works the same way as MIDI mapping, except it's not with a MIDI controller, but your computer keyboard. But of course, this only allows you two states with each key press. So on and off, for example, or toggling between a min and max. So it's not quite as useful, but it's still quite good. So for example, what I like to do is say I'm, I'm mapping this. Let's go into the mapping mode first with Command K or Control K if you're on Windows. And so I can select the on off button here of the chord, and then I could then toggle it on and off as needed and see if I like this and I could also so automate this later on if I find I want some parts playing the chords and others not, for example. I'm going to link another tutorial as well, how you can make use of key mapping in a useful way in music production. And this is how I use it most of the time only, not really on stage because I'm a computer to the site. And Ableton have added a lot of one letter shortcuts that you can use to kind of turn things on and off. And that is really useful, but it also means that for key mapping, fewer and fewer letters are still usable unless you want to block certain things. So for example, if we're just going out of the mapping mode again, then here with the collections, they use the numbers one to seven for tagging anything within the collection. So if you key map the numbers one to seven, you're going to block this option. Might be fine most of the time, maybe not. And then if you use the computer MIDI keyboard, at least occasionally, then you already have most of the upper row of letters, the middle row of letters, and most of the lower row of letters blocked already. So basically, if you have that on and you use a QWERTY layout, then what you've got left is I, N, and M really. And so we could map this, but that doesn't give you many options. So if I'm going back into the mapping mode, so basically what I could map now is I use the uppercase. So I use shift and I, and then for example, could map this to tab so I can tap the tempo quickly. And so now I have the key I mapped twice, which is really useful. And even though the numbers are basically taken for the collections, you could still use the uppercase of the numbers as well to map. And, and if you don't use the computer MIDI keyboard, you have a couple more options. By the way, if you want to learn more about the computer MIDI keyboard, because you don't know what that is, I'm going to link this above and in the description. Then you have more options, but things, for example, let's say we've got S for solo, which is really useful. And in versions Life 11 or below, you could use uppercase S to, to map this to anything you like in your live set. But with Life 12, they added Shift S to be able to toggle solo on and off if the computer MIDI keyboard is used and on. So yeah, that's basically all my tips. I hope you find this useful. If you did, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Until then, bye.